After we've successfully installed Active Directory, we want to now configure Active Directory. One of the first steps we want to do is to assign a static IP address. So far, we've been using DHCP, but of course, for our lab, especially for our servers, and especially for the server that will be running DNS, we want to make sure we have a static IP address. So we'll walk quickly through changing the IP address within Windows Server 2012 R2. So we're going to start our IP address range at 60 for all of our servers. So 192.168.1.60. My DHCP begins at 100 on this particular network. So anything before 100 would be fine. For the actual servers, we're going to start the IP address range at 60. We'll go ahead and configure the default gateway. And DNS, I like to use Google for DNS, so we're going to use 8.8.8.0. And at some point, once we configure DNS properly, we'll actually select this server as the DNS server. But for now, Google is fine. So after we've configured DNS, so after we've configured a static IP address we will go ahead and configure AD so let's go to ADDS after clicking more tasks we're going to go ahead to promote this server and we're going to create a new for since this would be the first domain controller in our domain controller and we're going to give it a root name uh, this is usually some type of DNS name I like to use something that in the past has been a invalid uh, top-level domain dot int for internal uh, since int could be something now that we they've extended the root names we'll go ahead and uh, make this I instead of just int uh, vg dot internal configure a password for ad recovery processes And then from here forward, we're just going to select the defaults. This will, of course, require some type of log off or reboot. So after we've completed the installation in Active Directory, we now need to go back and confirm DNS and do a little DNS housekeeping. Now remember from previous videos, the importance of both time, NTP, and DNS. So we want to go ahead and open our DNS tool, administration, administrative tool. Make sure we select the zone that we created and then go to our forward lookup tables. Go to our VG internal and just validate that the host that we created, that the DNS is correct for that host. Again, this would be overkill for some instances, but when we're talking about VMware vSphere, a lot of your problems and troubleshooting will be related to DNS. Another step that's not Necessary, but still a really nice to have is we're going to go ahead and create a for uh, reverse lookup zone. So new zone. We're going to add this zone to all DNS servers in the directory, which is only this server for our lab. It is going to re be a reverse zone for IP version 4. And the network ID is the first three octets of our network range. Defaults from this point forward. Finish. The zone is created. Take a look at what we have there. We have our host. And we are 
good. Let's just go back and make sure that nothing flaky has happened, gone wrong with our A record for our and we'll update the associated pointer. DNS is now properly configured for the zone. The one thing that we will change is that we need a, since this is the only DNS server in our directory, we'll need to uh, create a new lookup table and we'll go back to our IP version four settings for the network adapter and make this the primary DNS. The forwarder is properly there. Now we'll go back to our network settings. Our Ethernet adapter zero. Our IP four and the wizard has already changed the DNS to this local server. That completes installing and configuring Active Directory in DNS.